it's not woogie woogie <laughs> crazy head stuff. It is scientific through observation, but you also do have to have faith. Essentially, we're mining the soil. Instead of getting gold, we're getting grapes. The golden autumn light is just a bonus for Dave Carpenter. He's spraying his Canberra vineyard on this day because it's a three-quarter waning moon. The moon is waning and these are times when we see the soil absorbing moisture. Right now we are at the end of this growing season. Everything is going into the, um, the winter recess and what we want to do is to make sure that come spring the conditions are as good as they can be. Post vintage you've taken the fruit off. The vines continue to, to grow or operate and one of the things they are doing is to take nutrients from the leaves into winter storage in the roots. It's not just the cosmic calendar that makes the Lark Hill vineyard a bit different. It's also what's in the spray. Dave and Sue Carpenter are biodynamic farmers and they rely heavily on Preparation 500. It's the starting point for managing their vineyard and it begins with fresh cow manure, carefully sourced from a lactating cow that's just given birth. It is loaded with enzymes and digestive bacteria, particularly because she's just calved. So I'm packing these cow horns, and we use cow horns because they have a closed end. Bull's horns have an open end, and so worms could get in. So I'm packing it with here, and Dave's then sealing it with clay, so the worms can't get in. And we will then bury it, because it's autumn, and in spring we'll dig it up. And it'll just be like the most inoffensive soil. But it is a starter kit to stimulate fungi and soil organisms and to help the vines grow healthy, and in fact, to help anything on the farm. Biodynamic farming was founded by German philosopher Rudolf Steiner in the 1920s in response to the emerging use of synthetic fertilisers and pesticides. The carpenters went biodynamic in 2003 to help them adapt to Canberra's lack of water and long dry spells. Every year, they bury their manure-filled cow horns for six months over winter. It's a total and holistic system of looking after your farm, whereas in organic farms, it tends to be a hands-off matter where you say, I shall not cover you with chemicals and I shall stand back and suffer. Whereas a biodynamic system is always supportive with mulching, with soil nutrition, always aware and always immersed in every aspect. So it's not just the vineyard, it's to do with the whole farm. So what happens to them now? They just sit over winter. We'll, we'll cover them with, this, with, uh, with what we've dug out of the hole and um, they'll just be quietly resting over winter in, in the soil. You've got this natural relationship, this symbiotic um, relationship between plant roots and fungi in the soil. And one of the first things you do in biodynamics is to try and get carbon into the soil. You try to stimulate soil microorganism growth, including fungi. And at the root level, you're getting an interchange of phosphate for sugar at the root hair level. And this extends, basically, this extends the root system of your vine, or of your plants, 
to the whole web of the fungal uh, organism. After it's dug up, the preparation is diluted in a flow form, a gravity-fed trough designed to imitate a mountain stream and enhance the power of the 500. Critics say biodynamics is more about mysticism than science. But before establishing Lark Hill, Dave Carpenter was a visiting fellow in mathematics and physics at the Australian National University. Sue Carpenter was a statistician with the CSIRO. I'm quite happy for us to have our own satisfaction from, from knowing what we do. I don't have to feel that I, I need to justify our actions to anybody. It's not woogie woogie <laughs> crazy head stuff, it's, it's much more pragmatic than that and it's, it's using, using something, using a system that has been shown to, to help um, agriculture. Biodynamic farming is not new to Australia, but in the past decade or so, some serious players in the wine industry have grown their grapes under the system. One of them is Cullen Wines at Margaret River. It's one of the region's oldest and most successful brands. At Cullen, every day is governed by a strict cosmic calendar. Fruit, root, flower and leaf days dictate when to harvest, prune, or even just let the grapes grow. These Semillon Blanc grapes were harvested on a full moon to take advantage of the additional cosmic energy. When the moon is in the constellation of a fire sign, it's uh, good for fruit, so today is good for fruit, so we're harvesting, and that's also made stronger by the fact that it's a full moon. So it's sort of lovely really, it's very much a connection with uh, the planets and the plants and everything. Vanya Cullen produces some of Australia's finest wines. Her best can sell for up to $350 a bottle. Going biodynamic in 2003 was an extension, she says, of the philosophy she inherited from her late parents, who established the Cullen Vineyard nearly 50 years ago. How we're farming is how people used to farm before chemicals and industrialisation. So you were connected to nature and uh, so that's, that's, that's how it is. But uh, I suppose Mum and I worked, um, worked with my mother for 25 years and you know, we were always minimal chemical inputs with Mum and Dad and then we went to organic. And then when Mum passed away, it was sort of like feeling like there was something else we needed to do. And uh, the biodynamics came up as a sort of way to go inside out and um, yeah, felt right. Cowhorn manure is important at Cullen too, but the grounds and garden manager, Jamie Orkin, also grows medicinal herbs to add to a range of natural preparations. There's eight different preparations, but you could really just go into a whole range of all medicinal herbs that you can find, and, um, but these are the ones that are needed for certification. So we have the yarrow, the chamomile, stinging nettle, oak bark and dandelion. Um, they get buried in various animal parts and then buried over the winter months when all the energy recedes back into the earth. So if you look at one of these little two gram sections, there'll probably be millions of different types of bacteria and biology in there. Um, and from that, you're inoculating your soil, you're inoculating your compost with this. Um, and it all comes down to diversity of species and that's the key to processing minerals. So instead of using heavy chemicals or acids, we use these guys, it's the most efficient way of processing minerals. And essentially we're mining the soil, instead of getting gold we're getting grapes. At Cullen Vineyard, compost is king, and the waste from each vintage is a vital ingredient. So this is some Chardonnay grapes from the 2017 vintage. 
Um, they've been hanging on the vine till last week and uh, they've been pressed off in the winery and these are going to go full cycle. Compost is all about balancing out your carbon nitrogen and this is our key nitrogen source for our compost. Uh, we want to get those ratios in a good balance. Um, so that's where it starts. We, we cycle that back to the vineyard. Fresh skins vineyard manager up. Matt Dermody uh, says the ethos there. at Cullen uh, is all about balance, growing fruit from vines that are in harmony with the environment. And it's not just compost and biodynamic preparations used to achieve that balance. A range of cover crops grown in the rows between the vines help wow, boost carbon and soil oh, microbiology. It's, it's pretty rocky country on this ridge line. Um, but if we just take a little, a little look here, we can see how that soil's really holding together. Um, there's not a lot of sort of compaction there. You don't see that sort of fungal activity in a conventionally managed system. Um, what we're, we're doing here is promoting microbiology. Um, we don't use any fungicides, herbicides, insecticides, pesticides. So you can imagine what a fungicide's going to do to your fungal hyphae in your soil. And do you have any um, scientific evidence to sort of support what you're saying is in the soil? Yeah, I mean, we do sort of all sorts of analysis throughout the year, um, send these soils off for, for testing. We also send the soils off for microbiological testing. So we're looking at the counts of the bacteria, the fungi, the nematodes, beneficial nematodes. We want as many nematodes in that system as we can. Vanya Cullen studied zoology before winemaking but she admits biodynamic farming is as much about faith as it is science. I don't think we've got anything to prove. I mean, I look at the quality of the wines that we make and that's the bottom line. It is about working very hard and observation and in that it is scientific through observation, but you also do have to have faith, but I think people do anyway. Put aside the cow horn manure and references to the cosmos and biodynamics is really just a natural farming system with an emphasis on soil microbiology. But it's one with a long history and a colourful story. And in the wine industry, there's nothing new there. At Lark Hill, Dave and Sue Carpenter's son Christopher has been making the wine since 2003. He's a new school winemaker, comfortable with old school vineyard management. The 500 preparation is really the cornerstone of biodynamics. But beyond that point, I think it's a bit of an a la carte system you can take and use what you, you find engaging out of the farming aspects of it and take and use the philosophy of it as much as you want. Um, and I'm fairly pragmatic. I, I come from a, a pretty pure science background and so do my parents. So what we take out of it is, is really the bio, biological controls and, and the sort of the positive impacts we can have on our own ecosystem from that biology perspective. And the philosophy looks after itself. It's, um, it just becomes a really lovely farm to work on. This year, Christopher Carpenter was a finalist in Australia's Young Guns of Winemaking Award. His goal each vintage is to turn 50 tonnes of grapes into wines that express the season and their environment. A lot of my job is done in the vineyard. Um, in essence, what it means is the best thing for me to do is, is really get out of the way of the fruit and, and let the, the vines express themselves through the wine. And I do that by not adding a lot of um, inputs in, in the winery, not sort of having to correct the, the acid level or the nutrient level and just relying on the vineyard to get the balance right from the start. Um, and what comes through in the wine is, is a wine that's unique to this vineyard and unique to every vintage without being sort of adjusted and propped up and averaged across the seasons. Cheers. Cheers. This is our reserve and it is a touch of luxury. Mm. It's very light. I like it. I like it. For most consumers, all that matters ultimately is what's in the bottle. And while that's important for producers, being biodynamic is much more. 
It's yeah. natural farming. It's peaceful. It's sustainable. It's low intervention, but you're always supporting and always aware of all of the things going on. The chooks, the birds, the butterflies, the ladybirds out there munching insects. So it is um, a holistic approach to farming. It's about sustainability and being good stewards of their environment. The most important thing is the earth. You know, it's like we we come from the earth and we are dependent on her for everything. And so if we don't look after her, then um, we're not looking after ourselves. Mm -hmm.